Hello and welcome to the fourth video of this series. If you haven't watched the series from video one, I'll put the link to the whole playlist in the description below. This is the fourth video and this is the third module of this particular course. In this video specifically, we will talk about different digital marketing channels and formats. Obviously, there are a lot of formats and channels which we will, which we have to discuss. They all will not be covered in this video, so this will be split into two videos. So uh, the first thing I want to discuss is when we say digital marketing channels or digital marketing modules, what they are. Now, basically, digital marketing channels, digital marketing in itself is basically getting your word out. Whether you are a company, you want to spread a word about a new launch, you want to sell products, you basically you use digital marketing so that you spread the word, you have an offer, you have a new product, or you're just selling your services or products. You just want to reach to the audience or the prospective clients who might be interested to buy or engage with your business. That's what digital marketing basically is. And all of this is done through internet channels. Now, a channel uh, within digital marketing would mean uh, what kind of medium are you using? Some people say, okay, you know what, because I have worked with some luxury brands in the Middle East, they think, you know what, our choice is a Snapchat because that's where the high value audiences, teenagers uh, in the Gulf are. Basically, they, they will engage with the makeup brands and luxury brands on Snapchat. And in some cases, if you are an e-commerce website and you sell, let's say, jackets or electronics, you want to be present on whenever somebody is searching on Google, let's say, uh, black jackets for men, you want to be present there. So in that case, you use Google as a channel. So there are specific channels. Now, without wasting any more time, so here on the screen, you will see that the, these are the most popular channels in digital media. Actually, I'll say all of them. Maybe there are some channels uh, here and there, small channels, but most of the times this covers like 95 percent or more uh, media so these are the different channels in digital marketing obviously if you want to be a digital marketer or you want to do digital marketing for your own company you will have to understand each of these channels what they mean why are they important because each of these channels have some pros and cons and each of these channels is suitable for a certain need and it does not mean that as a business uh, you have to just choose one channel you can use a mix which is called a media mix so generally when you work for a company or an agency or a freelancer when you work with a client the first thing they'll ask you is can you send us your media mix what are the channels you will use what are the formats you will use how much budget will you allocate to each right so you always choose a combination of these some companies invest in all of them but there are always something called hero channels for a company there are always three or four or two hero channels which is where most of their investments and most of their efforts go into obviously they are present on other channels as well but those are the hero channels are the ones where they focus most of this so basically if we have to look at channels we first look at the division based on whether that channel needs investment or not for example on the left hand side you will see these are uh, paid channels which are where you have to invest money as a company so for example SEM or search engine marketing or uh, display advertising video advertising app advertising social media marketing if you observe social media marketing is both in non-paid channels and paid channels as well because you can run ads on Facebook or on other social media as well as you can just do organic content uh, publishing so that's why it's covered in kind of both um, the categories then we have shopping ads programmatic affiliate influencer audio and on the right hand side in non-paid channels we have SEO SMM email content and PR so that's what we will discuss in this module now obviously each of them then we will discuss in detail for example search engine marketing it's a field in itself so we will cover them in detail but this video because we're just starting I just want your fundamentals to be very strong so in this video I'll just give you an overview of each of these channels and later obviously we will discuss all of them in detail but this is very important at this point of time uh, to understand these channels and get familiar because probably from next module onwards we will focus more on strategy and hands-on we'll uh, catch up the pace but I kind of kept these videos a bit slow so that you have uh, strong fundamentals right before we jump into each of these channels I want you to understand that how do you identify something is an ad now when you go to internet you go to Google you go to other websites there's a lot of content now which of those are ads so as per the IAB standards every advertiser or a company tech company like google or whoever is handling your advertising they need to mention that whatever content is ad they need to mention it for example if you go to google you will see 
anything that is an ad will have something like this which is ad ad and then uh, if you see this display advertising uh, this will have this kind of error if this kind of icon if you hover your mouse it will say add choices or something and same thing on Facebook here if you go you will see sponsored in some cases you will see advertisement like this one let me show you uh, for example I'll go to Google and I will search let's say for jackets for men see uh, these are the ads that's why you will see it says ads here and then this one is an ad it will mention ad here this one is an ad this will mention ad and then you see this is an organic result and it will not say ad similarly if I go to let's say uh, for example Khalij Times is a website I'll go here and if you see that this is all the content the website has but if you see this one is an ad which is loading it will say this is an advertisement or even on the right hand side this is an advertisement even here as I told you if you click on hover your mouse it will show ad choices so basically any ad you see on internet it will have something called ad advertisement or in certain cases it will say sponsored so let's say uh, we go to facebook.com and if I go to facebook.com here let's say I scroll down now you see here it says sponsored which means this is an ad from Adobe right even these two on the right hand side they are sponsored this means this is an ad and this is an ad now if you scroll down and you will see that these are organic posts these are organic posts and then you will see uh, this is an ad again now this is a Facebook ad on Facebook so now that you understand how to recognize an ad that's when we will jump into our first uh, category or first channel of digital marketing which is SEO now SEO is short for search engine optimization as the name suggests what it means is you have to optimize your website for the search engine now what that means is now whenever you go to Google and you search for something you see this page with results this is called SERP which is search engine result page so even if you do it the same thing on Bing or Yahoo or any other search engine the result page you see it's called SERP or search engine result page now search engine result page consists of two sections one is these ads now if you see the top four results here one two three four they are all ads because it's say ad 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 sometimes you'll see an ad here or anywhere and this is the paid section or the sponsored section and if you scroll down after the third or fourth result these results they will not have anything called ad here that means they are organic results now those are the paid results these are the organic results now these ones are results are from campaigns now for example in this case sky scanner is running a campaign now in this case fly scoot is running a campaign we will discuss obviously all of these now this these ads are called search engine marketing now these guys are running campaigns they're paying google to show their results for this keyword here right anyways that is the topic for later but after this section these ones are called organic because they do not pay to google right so now why when i search for cheapest air tickets why did cheapflights.com appear here then is my trip appeared on the second uh, ranking and then kayak on the third ranking and there will be a lot so if i go to next page here i will have thousands and thousands of results now some page some websites will be on the ninth page eighth page now obviously the higher you rank in the organic section for example the first page the first result it means that this website has the highest ranking right so SEO is basically a process where you optimize your website to make sure that your ranking increases. Now in turn, in, for this particular keyword, cheapest air tickets, now cheap flights has the highest SEO ranking. It has a ranking of one, right? Now, which means that their SEO is very good. Similarly, is my trip. They have a very good SEO, but not as good as this particular website chief flights for this particular keyword which is cheapest air tickets maybe if i search for uh, tickets from berlin to india maybe ease my trip will be on the first rank that means ease my trip seo for that keyword is the best it has ranking one so seo is always tied with keywords now this channel why this channel is important is because you will get because a lot of traffic if you have good SEO that means you will get a lot of free traffic from Google people will search for those keywords if you have good SEO you will appear on the top or the first page people will click and go to your website which means you are getting a lot of free traffic right now this ranking of Google 
is dependent on a lot of factors. Some people say that the algorithm, we don't know how actually the algorithm works, but Google keeps publishing that, okay, these factors matter for SEO and advertisers to understand that how they need to optimize. Now, some of the factors to give you an idea is, um, for example, here, let's say a secure and accessible page. Now, your website needs to be HTTPS and it needs to have an accessible website, it shouldn't have errors. That's the first thing that Google looks in terms of when it ranks the website. There are 200 parameters or more based on which Google provides a score and obviously the ranking. Now, page speed. Now, you, the better the page speed, the better ranking you will have like mobile friendliness your website should be mobile friendly it should appear it should not appear like for example if you go to some website and a desktop version appears you will see in on your mobile a part then you'll have to scroll right and left to go to that particular section now your website should be mobile friendly now domain age so if you just start a website today you buy a domain and it will take a lot of time for you to rank now google looks at that how old this domain is and um, also url as well for example here i was looking at cheapest air tickets now obviously uh, this cheap flights.com it's closely relevant this might have added some points to this particular website ranking as well obviously if i'm looking for for example if i go to senator viran ads i search for senator viran ads on google then now my website domain is senator viran ads i will obviously get a lot of points to rank higher for that keyword because that is my uh, kind of uh, domain and then it will also matter how many links you are using on your website, how many other websites are linking to your website, for example. That's why people update their social media pages, they update their websites there, because if I go to a Facebook page, Senator Viran Ads, and I add my website URL there, Google will know that there is one link somewhere on Facebook that is redirecting here. Now, obviously, if your, you, your website is mentioned on Wikipedia, National Geographic, or big publishers, the more links that link to your website, Google thinks that, okay, this website is more authentic. And then social signals, how many reviews your business has, and uh, for example, the Google business. And then real business information, if you have address mentioned there, and the structure of your website, there's a lot. But basically what I wanted to show you is, <clears throat> that is what SEO is. So you basically optimize your website as per the Google recommendations that how many tags to use, how many, how to structure your website to make sure that your ranking improves on Google search and you get a lot of free traffic. That's what SEO is. Now, one more thing you need to understand is this is specific to websites, obviously. Now, there's something which is kind of a part of SEO nowadays. It's called ASO or App Store Optimization. Now, obviously, if you have a website, you do the SEO, what we, what we discussed. But if you have an app, obviously, for example, if I have an app which is used for uh, digital payments, right? Let's say something like uh, Stripe or Payoneer. I go to App Store and I search for uh, digital payments apps. Now, obviously, if you are on Apple Store or you are on uh, Google Play Store, there will be a lot of results you will see, right? Even how you can optimize, there are a lot of factors that optimize that which app gets ranked on a search result on these app stores. Uh, for a particular keyword, there are factors like what keywords, what name of the app, what description of the app you use. So there are companies who invest a lot in those. There are teams who kind of update those descriptions of the apps so that they rank better in the app store search. That is called ASO or app store optimization, which is again considered to be a part of SEO, which is search engine optimization. Okay. Now to give you a little bit of more uh, better understanding about SEO, so what does an SEO guy do? So for example, uh, some companies will have one person handling their SEO, some companies will have a team of uh, SEO if SEO is a very important channel for them. For example, websites like uh, let's say Amazon or websites like bbc.com, they have teams who handle their SEO, right? But what does that guy or that team actually do? They help to increase ranking on search engines, with whether it's Google, whether it's Bing, Yahoo, or any other search engine, but mostly it's Google because Google has more than 90% market share. And they help to uh, uh, improve CTR. For example, if I go here and I search for, let's say, Senator Viran ads, right? Now, if you see here, uh, my website will appear here. For this keyword, I have the best rank because obviously this keyword is mentioned multiple times on my website. My domain is like this. And uh, what so SEO teams even control that when somebody search for this keyword Sanator Viran ads, what appears here? Obviously, my website is appearing, but what appears in the description? OS Ahmed offers di digital marketing training and consulting. So they test different copies here so that um, 
I have better CTR. Now this is a different a bit of uh, different examples. Now let's say I search for cheap flights. Now, for example, let's go to the organic section. Now see, the keyword is cheap flights and cheapflights.com is showing cheap flights, airline tickets and airfares, fine deals, right? So their SEO team come, keeps on optimizing that for this keyword, our website should appear in the organic result, but it should say find cheap flights and save money on airline tickets. Next, they will test, uh, find the cheapest in the market or these kind of things. So they keep testing a lot of copies and a lot of stuff to make sure that the CTR improves, like click-through rate improves, which we discussed, right? And monitors, they monitor search trends. So they monitor, for example, what is uh, what are the trending keywords these days on Google. So they try to include them in their website to make sure that they appear on more and more searches. For example, let's say in 2021, there was a surge in keywords for uh, work or uh, home office setup. So the furniture companies were focusing a lot on this Similarly, people were buying and looking for uh, COVID test labs around them. So the webs, the hospitals and those kind of companies, they focused on these kind of keywords. So there's always a trend of keywords, which these companies, uh, the SEO guy, he needs to keep a track of this so that he includes those keywords on the website so that you appear on more search results and get more traffic. And then uh, work with website team and content marketing team. So they always coordinate with the website team to have some keywords there and marketing team to involve certain keywords on the landing pages and basically optimize for more traffic. And they work on quarterly targets. So for example, if I had an SEO guy uh, working for me, so the targets would look like, okay, I'll tell him, you know what, Senator Viran ads, my ad is appearing on the first place. Your three months target is after three months, it should be consistent there should not be another website who appears on number one rank for this keyword or let's say i'll tell him you know what let's say somebody is searching for dv360 uh interview questions right so if you see that the first result is again my website and let's say i was appearing on third or fourth result so i'll give my target that in three months i should appear on first page or i should appear on second rank at least average should be second uh, position and things like that so this is what SEO is and what SEO guys do. Now this leads us to our second uh, channel which is SEM and probably one of the most popular channels in digital marketing. Uh, SEM uh, is short for search engine marketing and some people call it PPC as I told you before because uh, it was also called pay-per-click advertising because this was one of the channels which would where advertisers would have to pay for each click and not impressions. Anyways, it's just good to know information. It's called SEM and it's called search engine marketing in the full form. Now, what happens is search engine marketing is when I go to Google and I told you in the first section here, which shows these kind of ads, these are run these kind of campaigns, which result at, and show these kind of ads is called search engine marketing. It's called search engine marketing because the ads appear on search engine uh, result page, right? Now what happens in uh, these, this particular channel is there are certain things you need to know. Now uh, search engine marketing is always tied to certain keywords. So for example, in this case, Cheap Flights, the Skyscanner website has a campaign created, a search engine uh, marketing campaign, and at least they have this particular keyword they are bidding for. And search engine marketing, as I told you, is includes any, if you're running a campaign on Bing or Yahoo or any other search engines, that's search engine marketing but one thing you need to know is google has almost 90 percent of the market share which means that any uh, searches on any search network done in the whole world 90 percent around 90 percent of those searches are done on google so that's why most of the companies run their search engine marketing campaigns only on google because they don't want to spread too thin for like a little bit of percentage so for example yandex is something which is popular in russia baidu is uh, in china yahoo and bing are quite worldwide, I would say, but just for 3%, companies don't want to invest a lot. There are certain companies who invest on all of them. Let's say Google, Bing, Yahoo, all of them. If they have operations in Russia and China, they will invest in Baidu and Yandex as well. But this is something you need to understand. Whenever somebody says search new marketing, in 90% of the cases, it is Google. But the procedure is same on all the search engine marketing uh, platforms anyways. Now, uh, the place or the platform where you run search engine marketing campaigns for Google is called Google Ads or uh, it was called AdWords before. So you might have heard those words before. Those are the platforms where we run these campaigns, which we will know in detail later. Now, one thing about search engine marketing you need to understand is this is, I told you in the beginning that this is a special channel. Uh, 
Why? Because it has the highest intent of the users. Now, for example, if I run a Facebook campaign, I'll target women who are interested in luxury brands and I have a Louis Vuitton campaign. Obviously, I am showing them the ads and expecting that they might be interested to buy, right? Because they are interested in luxury stuff in general. But the thing about search is, uh, search engine marketing is, you only show your ads when a user is searching for a keyword. So when I search for, let's say, a uh, uh, language course, now you will see this ad here, Lingoda, which is online language school, German classes available 24 seven. Now they are showing this ad because I was searching for this, which means the probability of me clicking and buying their product or service is high. Otherwise, if they have a Facebook campaign targeting expats in Germany, they are just expecting, okay, some of them might be interested or looking for uh, to do a German language course. But in search engine marketing, unlike any other channel, I am searching for German language course fee or course structure or institute, which means I'm searching for them already. That's why always companies, when they invest in digital marketing, the first channel they look in most of the cases is search engine marketing. So this is just to give you an idea what search engine marketing is, but what does an SEM guy or SEM team, some companies have huge teams for search engine marketing, or some companies have just one person. So, but what does that team or guy do? They do keyword research and competitor research. So for example, if I hire someone for um, handling SEO, SEM for my, camp, my uh, website, let's say Senator Viranath, the first thing he will do is, what are the other uh, companies like ours uh, doing? What kind of keywords are they bidding for? There are tools to do that. And what kind of ads are they showing? Let's say somebody looks for DV360 course. What are the other websites? What kind of ads are they uh, showing on Google search? And uh, what kind of keywords are they bidding for? DV360 course, DV360 tutorial, DV360 institutes. And uh, what are the different keywords basically we should bid for? Because if we sell DV360 course, if we sell uh, media plan template, we sell uh, strategy template. So they will prepare a list of keywords that we should bid for, right? Uh, digital marketing consulting and these kind of keywords. So that's what they do. What are the computers? What are the keywords we should bid for? And uh, plan costs and deliverables, obviously in Google ads, which we will know later, you would be able to see how many times a particular keyword is searched in a particular country. Uh, how much do I have to on an average pay for each click for a particular keyword? So when I give him a budget of let's say $10,000, they'll be able to tell me, you know what, this $10,000 will get us this number of clicks. And based on the conversion rate, we might get this number of sales. So they will have to plan and uh, these costs and deliverables run and optimize campaigns. Obviously, when they select the keyword, they run a campaign. Like in this case, cheapest air uh, travel, uh, Skyscanner is running a campaign for cheapest air travel. So similarly, uh, once they select the keyword, once they start running the campaign, you just don't leave it. You have to optimize, you have to see if there are new keywords. You have to see if uh, people are searching for, let's say something which is not relevant to you and your ads are still showing so that you can kind of negatively target them. And there's a lot of things which you will know. Basically, that's called optimization to make your performance better and better and obviously report on the campaigns, provide reports monthly, weekly, daily, whatever. Now, this leads us to our next channel, which is Google Shopping Ads. Now, Google Shopping Ads, we saw them already many times. Uh, so, for example, I will search for black jacket for men. So, these ads you see here on Google search and they have this product image, they have the price mentioned, they have the website where it's being sold, even the reviews. And if sometimes they have an offer, it will show you like this one, it's 150 euros, but now it's on for only 119 euros. This particular section, which appears on top of the Google search here and uh, is called shopping ads. Now this particular, uh, so for example, this is not one ad, each of them is an individual ad and can be from a different advertiser, right? But one thing you have to remember is these ads are triggered by keywords as well. So there is high intent. So when I search for black jacket for men, that's when this particular ad will appear, right? So if I go here and I search for black backpack, this ad will not appear, right? So they are triggered with keywords as well. Probably this will appear whenever I search for black jacket for men, jackets for men, jackets with hoodies for men, or jackets with hoodies or whatever these kind of keywords, right? So one more thing you have to understand is this particular uh, this particular ad format is or channel is only used by e-commerce websites who have 
products to sell online. They have all these, uh, they even have an e-commerce store uh, because to run these kind of ads, you have to create something called a Google Merchant Store where you link your e-commerce website with the merchant store to kind of tell merchant store that what kind of products you have available, what sizes, what are the prices and all those things. If you do not have an e-commerce website, you will not be able to create a Google Merchant Store and add your products there in, because it checks the feed real time how many products are left, if some of the products are not available, if you apply a discount on your website and things like that. So that is one of the limitations that shopping ads will be only used by e-commerce retail uh, websites. Right? So I'll show you later how what a Google Merchant Store is. And uh, these ads can appear on Google Search, Google Shopping tab and partner websites as well. So for example, when I search for uh, black jacket for men here and you see now all images, news, videos, there's a shopping tab on Google as well. So if I go here, these ads will appear there as well. So for example, these are the ads here, this section because it says ads and then there are organic results here. So the ads appear on shopping uh, tab as well. Now, before we jump into our next channel, I just want to mention that all the websites I mentioned, for example, if you want to know what are the, all the factors that affect SEO, you want to know um, the search trends I showed you, what is the share of voice of each search engine. Uh, all those links I'll provide in the description below if you want to know more in detail or where do I get the, that kind of data. Now this leads us to our next channel which is display advertising. Now display advertising is probably one of the oldest. Now what display advertising means is any banners you see on websites and apps is called display advertising. Now for example this one here if I go to any website let's say Kalish Times I see a banner here right. This is an ad uh, because it clearly mentions here. This is a banner, so which means this is a display advertising. For example, here, this is an ad, which is display advertising because it appears on a third party website as a banner. Now, if I search below, there will be a lot of other ads. For example, this one here probably is a display advertising banner as well. And even here, this is advertising. So now so you might ask me, okay, is this shopping ad or display advertising? Now this is display advertising because it does not have attributes of shopping ads. One, because Oaklu is advertising and they have took the whole banner. It's just they have divided their banner and showing four different ads. But there is no price mentioned, there's no discount mention or any details about the product. So this is our display advertising as well. Now, spot a home ad is appearing here. It is again display advertising because the whole banner is took by spot a home, right? Now, these kind of ads you will see in apps as well. For example, if you go to uh, any app you are using which shows ads with an app, any game or anything, you sometimes see a banner which covers the whole screen. Sometimes you'll see a sticky banner which is on the bottom of the screen. You scroll the website, but it still appears there. Now, these are called um, display ads. Now, the for example, even if I go to my website, let's say I go to blog and I will see here these kind of banners. Now these are, for example, this one is a typical display banner, a typical size like this one as well. They are all display banners. Now this is called display advertising. Now display advertising can appear in three different formats. One is standard banner sizes, which is uh, banners like these. Just I'm just showing you and later I'll explain what it means. So this is a standard banner, right? Or uh, for example, this one is a standard banner. This one is a standard banner because they are of a standard size, which I will tell you how to look for them. But first, let me show you all of them. Then we have something called RDA or which is responsive display ads. Now what responsive display ads basically means is uh, if you go to any website, whenever you see this ad, it will be of the same size and it will appear in the same way. It's actually an image that's appearing. The advertiser, when they create this campaign, they upload this image and it will appear as it is everywhere. Now, on the other hand, if you look at this ad, this is not actually a banner. Now, this is not the whole thing is not one image. Now, when this advertiser is creating these kind of ads, they up upload an image, they upload a text headline, they upload it. This is called description. Then they upload this thing called a CTA, which is call to action. And Google, based on the size available on a particular website, will adjust it here and there. For example, the same ad I will show you. Let's say let's go to YouTube.com. Now, if you see, this is an ad as well, right? This is probably a responsive display ad as well because see this is the banner and then the headline is appearing here, the description is appearing here, right? And then the CTA is appearing here. And if this ad was to appear on my website, it will, the TikTok banner will appear here, the headline here, the description. So Google automatically makes it responsive based on the space available on a particular website. 
Now that is what responsive display ads is. It's a new thing which started a few years ago. So Google will automatically optimize how your banner will look. It's responsive. In certain websites, this headline and description might appear here on the banner and the CTA might appear somewhere here or here. So Google can uh, make any shape and size. However, in static banners, this is an image and it will always appear like this. <clears throat> they, they are not individual components. This is whole thing is one image. So that's called responsive display ads. And then we have native ads. What native ads means is <clears throat> native ads is something when an ad appears on a website and it looks like a part of the website. So it looks like the native content. You will not be able to differentiate whether it's an ad or not, except it will have something called advertisement on top. Let's say, for example, let me try to show you something. Let's Now, one thing you have to understand is uh, now display advertising is useful in a lot of cases. For example, remarketing. Whenever you have a search campaign, you ensure always that uh, you always have a remarketing campaign. Because, for example, when I was looking for black jackets, if I had clicked on an ad and I went to, let's say, oku.com to check one jacket. Now, I go to Khalish Time. They are, if they retarget me here. Uh, I might be interested because I was already looking for, I already checked their product. Probably I didn't buy it that time, but they will keep retargeting me. They will show me the same ad when I go to other websites, though I went to their website from Google search. But now wherever I go for the next seven days or 10 days or 15 days based on their campaign structure, I will see these ads. Now display ads, display ads are very useful in this kind of scenario because you search on Google once. They will not wait for you to go to Google and search for jackets again and show you. They'll show you wherever you go, which is called retargeting and display banners are very important in that case. Now, this is not exactly retargeting because I didn't go to Oku website, but that is our second point. Now, retargeting at these kind of display banners are important for contextual advertising or custom audiences. Um, so in this case, I will, I will be their custom intent audience because I was looking for, they had created a campaign, a display campaign such that they would have in their campaign mentioned that anybody who was searching for uh, black jackets or jackets for men, they should see our display campaign. Th these kind of audiences are called custom intent audiences. So, which we will know in detail, but I'm just giving you an idea. So in this case, so for example, the probability of me clicking on their ad here is high because I was looking for jackets. So if I see their banner, I might click and buy a product as well. So that's uh, why display advertising is good for remarketing custom audiences and it's good for branding as well. So for example, if you have, let's say iPhone has an uh, iPhone 14 is launched. Uh, so in those cases, they take these homepage top of, let's say BBC and top publishing websites in each uh, country. And this gives a good branding. Um, it's good for branding and awareness or uh, other things as well. But yeah, display advertising is used as that as well. But Companies spend a lot on display advertising as well. We will know more in detail when we are doing a campaign, but this is just to give you an idea. One thing you need to understand about display advertising is whenever you, we are talking about display advertising, when you upload creatives, there are certain standard sizes. Like your designer cannot come up with any particular size and send it to a publisher to uh, run it or upload it in Google Ads. Now IAB, which is Interactive Advertising Bureau, which is kind of an organization which controls all the standards, for internet advertising like I told you before an ad should always have ad mentioned sponsored mentioned or advertisement mentioned that this is something which IAB has <coughs> rolled out as a rule as well and they act as a central agency who control everything about internet advertising now as per IAB there are certain standard sizes because the problem what was happening before or would have happened is a publisher creates an ad slot on their website based on let's say a particular size they want a particular size of ad the pub advertiser will create a design which will look good for them. Now, because these ads have to appear on these slots, so there needs to be uniformity. So IAB set certain standard sizes that, okay, these are the standard sizes which everyone should use. For example, uh, the first thing, uh, whenever you look at a banner, it has a size. So you will hear something like 300 cross 250, 728 cross 90. 300 cross 250 would mean that it has a width of 300 and 250 height. If it is somebody says uh, we want a banner of 970 cross 250, which means its width is 970 pixels and height is 250 pixels. So that's how the sizes of banners um, are mentioned. But uh, now certain sizes have names as well. For example, 300 cross 250 is called MPU or medium rectangle. 
So probably if you start working in digital marketing, they'll be like, ah, we will run only MPUs for you. That means they will run 300 cross 250. Similarly, half page is 300 cross 600. 728 9 is leaderboard, 970 cross 250 is billboard. These are the most common use sizes and these are their names. I will put a link in the description below where you will be able to see all the IAB standard sizes and their names, but these are the most popular ones. Now this leads us to our um, last channel we will discuss in this particular video. There are more channels which we will discuss in uh, the next videos. But I again want to, you to understand that this particular video is to make you familiar with what are different channels in digital marketing, what are different formats, right? So uh, video advertising or YouTube advertising, because when somebody says you video advertising, mostly it's about YouTube. Now you will say, okay, there are video ads appear on Facebook and other social media platforms. They are generally considered separate because we'll discuss them in social media <coughs> marketing. But when we say video, generally it is YouTube and other, uh, because if you remember, when sometimes you go to a website, you'll see a video ad somewhere appearing in the corner. You go to an app while you're playing and a video ad will appear and the video will start playing video ad. So in this section, we will discuss mostly YouTube and uh, the video ads that appear on websites and apps. Now, first thing, why do people use video advertising? Because Video advertising, uh, as I told you before, every channel has some pros and cons. Now, video, the good thing about video ads is with video, you can tell a story. For example, if you are a new brand who just launched and you have to tell uh, people about the story of your brand. Why did you create this brand? Why, where do you position yourself and how and a lot of things, let's say. So in that case, what happens is video is the most effective channel because you can deliver a message in a 15 second or 30 second video, which you cannot do in a banner or search ad, right? So video is effective in that way and a lot of other ways which we'll discuss later. Now um, the first thing you need to understand about non-YouTube video ads. These are the video ads which appear on video uh, websites and apps. There are two types. One is rewarded and non-rewarded. Now rewarded would be if you go to an app and sometimes you see an ad and to get a new, let's say you finished all your life in uh, a game and you're not able to play it the next stage for 24 hours. Now the app gives you an option to watch a video ad complete and then you will get a reward, you'll get a new life. So those are called rewarded ads, okay? They have a specific use as well and anything that is not rewarded is the normal ones are non-rewarded ads. Now, <clears throat> specifically about YouTube. Now one thing you need to understand about YouTube is, for example, if I go here and I want to search, watch this video. Now when I click on this and I want to see a video before the actual video, which is 10 reasons you need to go all in on YouTube, this video appears, there will be an ad or two ads which will uh, play. For example, in this case, there will be two ads playing because it says ad one of two. Once this finishes, this is a 15 second ad, then I will see the next one, right? Now, this is an ad from TikTok. Um, now, what happens is if you observe here, if I keep the ad playing, after five seconds, I'll be able to skip this ad. And this is actually a 15 seconds ad, but I'll be able to skip. Now, these kind of ads are called uh, skippable ads. You can skip them after five seconds. The other type on the other hand is non-skippable. They are generally 15 to 20 seconds long and you will not be able to skip those. They will appear in the beginning of the video. You will have to watch 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Now the limits, uh, the maximum uh, limit because a uh, non-skippable ad cannot be like two minutes. You will have to watch two minutes of ads before you start playing the video. Now generally in some countries, the maximum uh, uh, video ad size or length has to be 15 seconds and in some countries it can be up to 20 seconds depending on the geography now i'll put a link for that in the description below as well if you want to know which countries has 15 seconds limit and which countries have 13 seconds but the idea here is one is skippable ads where you can skip one is non-skippable ads where you cannot skip and then there are bumper ads so for example if i keep it playing i watch the video and suddenly in between there'll be an ad which will play no skip button and it will not even have so for example in this video I have an option to click on this and go to TikTok website. Those ads will not have this thing. Those are called bumpers and they are always six seconds. So those are the third types which appear in between of the video, right? And then there are overlays. Uh, what happens on YouTube, these are the four formats. This is actually, this is not a video ad. So uh, while, while you are playing the video, the actual video will play here. You'll be watching the actual video, but you will see a banner here. So those are called overlays. Now, one thing different about those overlay ads are they are display banners actually because they're not a video ad. They will just appear here as a static banner, right? So those are the four formats. And now based on if this ad appears, so now this video ad appeared in the beginning of the video. That's why it's called pre-roll. If it appears in middle somewhere, 
then it will be called a mid roll and if it appears at the end it's called a post roll so these are the different positions associated with uh, different video ads so whenever you run video ads you can choose my ad should always appear as pre roll mid roll or uh, end roll so that is about uh, video ads on youtube and other websites nothing special about them probably when we create a video campaign you'll be able to see a bit more but that's all to know about video ads and that's all for this video thank you so much i'll see you in the next one where we continue with the other uh, digital marketing channel